Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, happy birthday to my lovely wife, Miss Information. So <laughs> I don't know how she keeps getting younger every year. It's a miracle of modern technology. I don't know, whatever it is. Anyway, very, very happy birthday to her. So I'm doing this in the car real quick instead of doing like a whole studio video. I'm at the gym. Seems like I'm always at the gym when I'm doing these videos. Anyway, I wanted to talk today about the cars.com article about the most American made vehicles. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that recently. The top two spots, which uh, which I think they either flipped or else the Model Y is new on the list. But anyway, number one, Model Y. Number two, Model 3. Then there's the Lincoln Corsair and is it the Honda Pilot. Anyway, those are three and four. And then the Model S and Model X are five and six. So out of the top six, Tesla has, <laughs> has four of the top six slots. They are by far, I mean, because that's all the models that they sell in the United States. So they have 100% of the brand is American made that is sold in the US. Now, obviously, if you're in Europe, you're getting China made Model Ys or Model 3s. And then of course, when the Berlin factory comes online, you will be getting those as well. So I, you know, obviously things are different in other countries, but at least in the United States, American made vehicles, uh, Tesla's got the top two spots and four out of the top six and their brand absolutely has to be the most American made brand because no other company makes a hundred percent of their vehicles like with that. So anyway, cars.com's criteria, <clears throat> it's not that important. You can read the article. I'll link it in the description if you're interested, but basically their criteria are, you know, final assembly, which is obviously Fremont, California. And now some from Austin, Texas are starting to trickle out. That will obviously increase over time. Um, motors made in the U.S. or engines, I guess. And weirdly enough, parts made in the U.S. or Canada. It doesn't include Mexico. So I'm not sure why it's Amer American made when it's when Canadian parts are considered okay, but Mexican ones aren't. Anyway, interestingly enough, the, the, the main, you know, the people that you think about being American made the most, which are, of course, GM and Ford, don't have a lot of representation in the top 10. They're, they're pretty far down the list in, you know, into the teens and things like that before you start getting to those vehicles. So what I wanted to talk about was, first of all, why does it even matter if it's American made? <laughs> There's a big thing. And I think in, the, in America in the, in the eighties, <clears throat> interestingly enough, I started purchasing cars in the late 1980s when Detroit, you know, American made cars had a terrible reputation and I bought one new American-made car, American-made car, but it was actually a Ford, oh my gosh, was it a Fiesta? Whatever it was, it was a little dinky Ford, and it was actually a partnership with Ford and Mazda. They were actually together for a while, and I, unfortunately, it some drunk driver hit me and totaled the car, so that, that really sucked because I'd had the car for like three months, so <laughs> a lesson in how much money you can lose on buying a new car if you finance it, and it's worth so much less than it was when you bought it. But anyway, that's a whole other story. But anyway, I, I was like, I don't like Ford, but I really do like Mazda. So pretty much after that, pretty much after the late 1980s, early 1990s, if it had a one on the VIN, which indicated it was made in the US, I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't even look at it. If it had a J on the VIN, that meant it was made in Japan, I would buy it. So, so I was, you know, Toyota and Mazda were the two companies that I purchased vehicles from used and new didn't really matter which one but it was very important to me because I felt like American made cars were actually crappily made cars now obviously things change over time but I'm just saying like American made cars is not necessarily something where it's like oh this is the best and everybody's going to want to get it I specifically went out of my way not to purchase American made cars for this long in fact this Tesla having a one on the VIN is actually very unique for me. Uh, I'm trying to think of the last one. Maybe it was that Ford back around 19, early 1990s that I purchased. Might have been the last one that had a one on it. And that actually might not have had a one. It might have been a J. So anyway, I'm just saying it's an interesting thing where some people are very much about American made cars and some people aren't. But there is a big segment of the U.S. car purchasing population that it thinks American made. So it's quite the 
revelation to realize that a lot of these American-made cars are really not. M many of them are assembled in Mexico. Uh, a lot are made in other foreign countries, including Japan and stuff, and China now. Uh, GM. <laughs> if you haven't watched Connecting the Dots whole thing about how GM sold America, you should definitely go find that out. It's an amazing series. I think three parts. But anyway, it talks about how a lot of these GM cars are actually made in China, or at least were until the United States found out about it. But again, a whole other story. Okay, so we've got Tesla being by far the most American-made brand and having four out of the top six most American-made cars, including the top two. So why does Tesla not get any love out of the U.S. population? If you're if you're not you know if you don't live in the United States, you may say, well, obviously they get a bunch of like you know kudos and things from the U.S. population for being American-made, but. I will wager, like I'm going to the gym next, if I talk to the people in the gym, just a random sampling and said, is, is Tesla a US car company? Most of them would say no. And if I asked them where Teslas were made and what country it was based in, they probably wouldn't know. A lot of people might guess China, which interestingly enough is correct in terms of the Shanghai factory. But a lot of people simply don't know that Tesla's in the that Tesla's that are sold in the US are made in the US. I should ask that guy. <laughs> I should just go like, "Hey, where is Tesla made?" But anyway, so I think a lot of people don't know where it's made, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I actually asked my Patreons on on Discord this morning, so hi to everybody. And if you want to join the team, join the team. You know how to do that. It's just in the link in the description. So anyway, um but I asked them and a lot of people said mainstream media has a lot of fud, which is fear, uncertainty and doubt, a bunch of incorrect information that makes it seem like Tesla is not as American made, not as quality, all of these other things. There's a lot of negatives that these, that, that media puts out. And of course, a lot of people, whether it's watching traditional news or, <clears throat> you know, Twitter or CNBC online or whatever it is, you know, whether you're getting your news in the modern format or the old school format, there is a lot of misinformation out, including, uh, I was saying my son, uh, who's, you know, a relatively well-informed person was telling me that our Model Y right here was going to have to get scrapped after 50 to 100,000 miles because the battery would be dead and we'd have to either spend 20 grand replacing the battery or scrap the car entirely. So, I, you know, I don't have evidence of that yet, but many, many people have driven their their Model 3s and Model S's and X's for hundreds of thousands of miles without any problems. So, so anyway, there's a lot of misinformation that's out there. There's a lot of misinformation about whose cars are the most American. And again, I don't know if a lot of countries care about that. I imagine Germany cares, right? You care if your BMW is German made or your Volkswagen or whatever. Uh, so there is some pride of you know, building things in your own country. Uh, but a lot of that's also political. A lot of politicians talk about made in America and stuff too. Um, the previous president was all about getting Apple to manufacture their, their computers and things in the United States again. Uh, whether or not that's a viable option or not is a whole thing. But it is interesting that there's it's kind of a political, what do you call it, football or something where, where people are like, yeah, made in America. So it's a really big deal to a lot of of politicians. It's a big deal to a lot of people in this country, but a lot of people don't know that Teslas are made in America, um, made in the United States, and, and that they're the most made in the United States. So if you, again, if you ask the general population, I would wager a, get, a bet that most of them would not think that Tesla certainly was the most American-made company. They would say Ford or GM because they spend a lot of advertising for that. Which gets me to my next point, which is a sawhorse that I've been on for quite a while which is the Tesla needs a PR department. So I was discussing this with the Patreon patrons this morning about how there's so much misinformation out there. And Elon Musk is like, look, we've got demand out the, out the wazoo, right? We've got at least six or nine months worth of demand for these vehicles. I don't care. I don't like PR. I don't like playing that game. And I my contention is that you have to think about the long game with branding. GM and Ford and, you know, to some extent Chrysler as well, although they've gone in a whole different direction. But, you know, if you look at Ram, which is Stellantis now, uh, it's all about America, 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 right? So they, they advertise these things for years and decades. And so all the time on the news or whatever it is that you're watching, you're seeing American made, American made. This is, this is you know, tough and it's a truck and it's the thing that you want. And by the way, I think the Ford F-150 is the 20 most most American-made vehicle uh, on the cars.com list. You can check. But 
so it you know it's america and it's america's vehicle but it's not very american made so if anybody actually cares it's really not and the cyber truck will be way 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 more american made than the ford f-150 is when it comes out so anyway all of this is to say that again elon doesn't agree with me but i'm saying that what you're playing for with public relations is the long game and i'm not talking about doing smarmy marketing and all of that kind of stuff but putting out information that says hey you know just a thing that comes out in some mainstream media area somewhere that says look tesla is the most american made you know car company and has the top two spots for most american made vehicles that's kind of information that needs to get out in front of the public eye now of course one of the reasons why mainstream media spreads a lot of misinformation about Tesla is they have a lot of financial motivation to spread good news about other car manufacturers because they pay for advertising on these, you know, channels, whether it's CNBC or Fox News or whatever the heck it is. Um, they're paying advertising for that. <clears throat> So from the financial perspective, I can see why media for the most part is going to say better things about people who are, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, what is that? I know which side the bread is buttered on or something like that. So anyway, right. So they, they, they're like, okay, these people are paying for this and we're going to not give them bad press because then they will stop advertising with us and that would be bad. So it's not necessarily that they're anti-Tesla, but they're being paid in some ways to be positive or pro other um, companies. So anyway, so Tesla just takes the brunt of that because they get the negative of all of that stuff. They get the, 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 the counter of that. Nobody's there to say, hey, give us good press as well. And nobody's there to correct the facts. So what I'm not saying is that Tesla should be playing the game and paying people to give them good press. But <clears throat> what they should do is have very clearly stated, well, you know, done communication with graphs and text and things that goes out on a regular basis. You know, again, I'm not talking about a huge PR department and I'm not talking about playing the game that most other companies play, but I am talking about, maybe they just call it an information department, although that sounds a little scarily like the Nazi department of information or whatever. But, you know, but, but anyway, what I'm saying is that they should have something, they don't have to call it PR, but they need some way of communicating besides, you know, Elon Musk's tweets. They need a channel to the, the media and to the public. Uh, again, a lot of what was really interesting in my discussion on, on Discord this morning was so many people saying that Tesla owners didn't know. They were saying Tesla owners didn't know you could do road trips. Tesla owners didn't know that you could actually stop charging the car at 80% and continue on a road trip. So they would sit there for an extra, because it takes a really long time to go from 80 to 100%. So they would sit at the charger for like an extra 30 minutes to charge up the vehicle before they continued on when they could just keep on going. So there's just even for people who own the vehicle, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So all of this is to say, amazing kudos to Tesla for building their cars for the most part in the United States. That's really cool. And it, it shows that manufacturing, not only the US, but the most expensive place in the US, the Bay Area of California. So, you know, there's, there's like, it's against all odds because there's so much manufacturing has left the United States. It's an amazing thing that Tesla is manufacturing heavy duty items, <clears throat> complex objects in the United States and has the top rating for those things. And it's really a shame that they're not getting some sort of credit for that because it's really important to the future of the U.S. that there is manufacturing and, and this kind of intellectual property is staying in the United States. So it's a good thing for the long-term economy, and it's a shame that they're not getting credit for it where credit is due. But part of the blame is on Tesla for not having a better or, or some public relations program. Again, you don't have to call it PR, but whatever it is, they need to get information out. They need to post this information publicly because a lot of media sources, if they gave it to them in a nice, easy to digest format, they would take that. I, I hate to say it, but a lot of journalists are pretty lazy. They're just like, whatever people produce as a, a you know, PR statement, they'll take that and they'll almost verbatim read it back. So, so, you know, there is the financial motivation to be nice to other companies that are paying a lot of the bills. But even beyond that, if Tesla just feeds them basic information, these people will use it and you'll get a lot more correct information out in the public and that will combat things. So 
yeah, so again, congrats to Tesla, but also Tesla, you really need to think about the long game, right? You've got plenty. <laughs> I hate when it does that, right when I'm about to end. <laughs> anyway, you've got plenty of good information. You've got great cars. You've got all of this stuff that's out there. You need to communicate that with that with people. You need to tell them what's going on. That's on you. You need to think about the long game because even though there's a ton of of demand right now, eventually you're going to reach the other half of the bell curve, the non-early adopters, the people who aren't paying attention. And those people by then might be so anti-Tesla that they would never even get in the car to try it out. If you get in the car, you're gonna like it and you're gonna wanna buy it. But a lot of people won't even get in the car. They won't get in the vehicle if they're so anti-Tesla and they're like, not American made, you know, not for me, oh, all these bad things, catches fire, batteries are dead after after 50,000 miles, blah, 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 right? So they'll, they'll have all of this negative stuff with nothing to combat it. And eventually that's going to take a toll on Tesla sales. It, it's going to be a while because obviously there's still a lot of people who want it right now, but it eventually will take a toll. So that's on Tesla if they do that. And Tesla really, <laughs> I'm making a plea here. I'm not a big fan of marketing and a big fan of public relations, but I think that Tesla can do it right. It doesn't have to be a large number of people. It could be one or two people, honestly, that just put out basic articles and information, you know, a couple of articles a week that are well-written, really informative, and are very clear and then answer the phones if you know if a media source says oh let's call tesla that there's an actual phone number to talk to somebody at that would be very helpful they don't have to play the basic game where they're always doing the you know back and forth and all that but just at least some sort of basic information so i'm pleading with you tesla it's going to make a difference and all of us stockholders will benefit from this in the future not in the next year or two but probably in the next half decade or so so anyway congrats to tesla keep up the good work get, get a pr department <laughs> all right i have a feeling i'll catch some heat for that statement but anyway let me know in the comments what you think in the meantime everybody have a lovely day and once again happy birthday to misinformation all right, I will talk to you all later. Now it's time for leg day. Oh, joy. <laughs>